Hey guys, welcome to Imminent Threat Solutions. Today we're going to be talking about the Agima Key Knot on our Knot of the Week, or otherwise referred to as the Dragonfly Knot. And what this is, is a knot that I learned how to kind of reverse engineer from when Kelly and I went to an exhibit at the Kimball Museum on samurai armor. Um, they had some samurai armor, they had some art. Uh, it was a really cool exhibit. Um, actually, I think it's still going on right now at the Kimball, so if you're local to the DFW area, definitely check it out. So as I was looking through the exhibit, I saw um, a lot of different samurai armor, and I was obviously drawn to the knot work that was on the back of the armor. Um, traditionally, I learned a little bit about this knot work, and the dragonfly knot was actually something that's it's really been around for a thousand plus years. Um, but this knot actually kind of symbolized, and you'll see as we talk about it, but it symbolized kind of a never-ending pattern. So. Um, I guess it really could have a lot of things to do in Japanese culture. I honestly don't know the, the true origin, so I don't want to speak as though I do. Um, but I thought it was a really cool knot. Um, some of the knot work and just rope work in general, the cordage that they had on the back of their armor was really cool. So um, what I've done is kind of trying to transition that into modern day. So what I did is tied some of that knot work and cordage onto the back of a plate carrier, since that's kind of our modern day samurai armor. Um, I know we're not Japanese, some of us are, some of us aren't, but at any rate, this is kind of my take on the kind of samurai knot work. So what we're going to do first is talk about the dragonfly knot, since that's kind of the, the hard element to tie with this whole scheme or the system that you'll see kind of on the back of the plate carrier. Um, so the dragonfly knot is actually, or can actually be tied two different ways. Um, and this was the hardest part to kind of reverse engineer when I was looking at this knot. Um, and as you can see here, what we've got is these two different versions of how to tie the, the dragonfly knot. Um, so the first step in this is actually to basically girth hitch a piece of paracord around an object because that'll give you a kind of a steady point to, to tie this onto. And I'd highly recommend that. It's, it's a little difficult and I had to kind of learn that the hard way when I was kind of trying to, to work with this knot. So what I did is during the exhibit, um, Shh, don't tell anybody, I actually took a picture of the knots that I wasn't supposed to in a non-picture event. But at any rate, I wanted to just grab a quick photo of that to just kind of take home and look at the knot and try to basically figure out how to tie it. So what I did is I experimented with a couple different ways to tie it. And the two versions that I found, and that's actually what I found, is that it's tied two different ways. So um, let me, first I'm going to walk through tying these and then I'll kind of explain those two different versions. So I'm going to leave this tied here on this side, um, but I, I do want to illustrate really quick what the, the big difference of these is. And it, it's not going to seem like much to you, but in reality it's going to produce kind of two different styles of this dragonfly knot. And what it looked like to me at first when I was looking at the two different versions that it was just flipped around backwards and that actually is not the case. So. Um, this is the, the starting point for both of these knots, and the reason I started at this is because I wanted to illustrate this. So the big difference you can see between these two loops, they intersect each other at the middle, but then this, so on your right, um, this working end actually comes through on the top, and this working end comes through the back side, as you can see. So it loops around behind this loop, and this loops in front of this loop. And then this cordage on your left actually bisects the other loop um, coming from the bottom. So as you look at this one, the difference being is that this right side on your right comes from or is behind just like this left or sorry left side is on this one. So as you can see, if I hold up both the right side of this one and the left side of this one, they're mirror images of each other. So that's kind of an important thing to, to kind of research there or to know about. Um, and, you know, I'm, I guess you could say I'm kind of nuking this out, but at the same time, I did see two different ways of tying it, and it really kind of racked my brain on, well, what's, what's the big difference? And that's why I wanted to show you the difference first before I tell you how to tie it. So I'm going to go ahead and take this one out, and we'll talk about how to tie it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to tie a single overhand knot and make a, make, basically make a loop. So once you have this loop, you're going to bisect it with the rope on the left side. 
So what you're going to do is actually come through this loop from the top. So you're actually going to be inserting the cordage from the top of the loop. And then you're going to come around underneath that and then come through this back side like this. And that's what's going to give you, you know, one side coming over that loop and one side coming from behind that loop. And then what you're going to do from this point is you're going to cross these loops. So this bite or this loop is actually going to come inside of the tied portion of this. So I'm actually going to take this loop and come right here. So that may be a little hard to see, but so that's going to come here and this is going to come right here. So it's kind of like a top and bottom thing. So then I'm just going to tighten that up. And it seems pretty simple, but like I said, it took me a while to really figure out what was going on. So that is the dragonfly knot. So the reverse of it, all this does is it, it's basically a mirror image. So if you were to hold this up and look at it in a mirror, you would see that you know the way that these sections interact with each other is just a mirror image. So I won't get into that too much, but I did want to show you that in the beginning just so you can see, just so you knew how to tie that. So from there, you can see what I've done here to this plate carrier is this is the basis for kind of our, uh, our modern day samurai armor on the back of a plate carrier. So this main section of larger cordage makes up the dragonfly knot right here in the middle. So there's your dragonfly knot. Um, and it's flanked by these other pieces of cordage and I've kind of frayed the ends here to mimic the, the tassels that are on Japanese armor. And I know this technically isn't paracord, but I wanted to do what I could with paracord to kind of simulate the, uh, the Japanese armor. So basically what I did is I girth hitched that. I tied the dragonfly knot there. And everything kind of goes behind the, uh, the molly webbing here, or the molly stuff, the pals webbing, sorry. So that uh, if you really did want to do this, it's not hopefully not going to get too tangled up when you're kind of running and gunning with a plate carrier. So what I did here is um, I tried to mimic one of the, uh, the photos that I saw, or the, uh, the pieces of armor I saw. This kind of mimics the patterns that were on the back of that. So we've got is uh, two bow lines here. One of each goes through here. This is kind of a square knot right through the middle there. And then these pieces of cordage that are girth hitched right here just simply wrap through the uh, basically the bites that come off of this dragonfly knot. And uh, just real quick to show you kind of how I frayed those, it's not too difficult, but what I did is, so on this piece of paracord, all you're going to do is pull out the guts of that. You, uh, you trim off the guts, and then you basically pull this back out, creating something like this. And it's hard to do without an actual piece of paracord, but you're left with a void. So you're left with just the sheath of the paracord. And all you're going to do is just start twisting that, and you can kind of use your fingers there to break that apart. And just basically rough that up and create kind of the fraying that I did with those other pieces. So that's really it. I wanted to, uh, to basically just show kind of the, uh, the modern version of what I saw on samurai armor. So hope you enjoyed it and learned how to tie a dragonfly knot. Uh, be sure to uh, let us know if you have any questions and uh, thanks for watching.